Okay, so here's part two of our opt-in page strategy tutorial. So how do you turn raving fans into raving customers? So again, this is Jacob Gudger, co-founder of Embark Internet Marketing, Marketing for Gurus. And in part one, we covered where do you put the opt-in form in terms of your strategy, and then what are four unique strategies you can use for opt-in systems. In part two, in this video, we're gonna cover three different ways to actually capture the opt-ins. And then what is the best way to style your page for your business? So forget what everyone else out there is doing. Forget what we're doing or what the big, the big internet marketing gurus are doing. What works best for you, your business, and your page? Here we go. All right. So here are three unique and different ways to actually capture the email. First is the Google friendly page, which I'll show you what that looks like. The second is the blog opt-in. And the third is the traditional squeeze page, which I'll also, sh also show you what that looks like. So the Google friendly page, what's this? Well, first you have an opt-in form above the fold. That means there's no scrolling down to see where they have to input their, their name and email. Uh, you have the headline tagged as an H1. That means in the HTML coding, uh, whether it's in raw HTML or you're doing it in WordPress, if you're in WordPress, you have to go to the HTML editing section and include the H1 tag. In this, you want to include your primary keyword. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, you have to go to EmbarkInternetMarketing.com, watch our training, we'll show you how to figure out what that is. Um, this also means you can't have your headline as an image. Some people like doing that. I like doing that on a lot of my sales pages because it stands out more, it, it looks better, and at that point, they're so well in the process, I don't need that page to be highly optimized. But on this one, you do. And then you have the subhead tagged as H2. All your keywords, meaning your top three or four keywords, are sprinkled throughout the bullet points where, where you're explaining the features and benefits of the lead magnet, what they're gonna learn in it. And then you have the relevant images Ha they have names, they get names. So when you're editing the pictures, you make sure the names of the images have the keywords in them. And any non-relevant images you have, meaning like arrows, graphics, just stuff there that's, that's there to look cool, those get numbers, digits as the name. Because you don't want to confuse Google with what's going on there and make it something that's, you don't want to put your keyword um, as the name of an image where the image has nothing to do with that. And you also have a navigation bar in here. Now what happens is this will reduce your conversions. And that's because there's other places for people to go other than uh, just opting in. But Google pr prefers this. So here's a great example of a Google friendly opt-in page. So this is one of my pages for a program called the Goal Achiever Online just goal achieving strategies, productivity mastery. You'll see we have the banner here, pretty simple, nothing too flashy. The navigation bar across here, including the various social tags. And then here's that headline uh, with H1 tags. Um, this is a, a project I partnered with Bob Proctor on. So we got an image of Proctor, image of him and myself with the video. Um, the bullet points, you know, the right keywords, you know, with with strong highlights also they're bolded. And actually we don't have a traditional opt-in form on this page. We just have this connect with Facebook button. And actually the opt-ins go way higher on that because people don't have to input anything. They just click it and they click allow. It's an app we have. The video, the presentation gets sent straight to them that way. It's really quick, really easy, and it makes opt-ins go quite a lot higher. So this is an example of one. And then also at the bottom, so we have the disclaimer, and then we have all these links at the bottom for the privacy policy and all the other links on the page. So that's a great example of a squeeze page optimized for Google. So that means I'm getting free traffic from Google for people who search my main keyword for this page. Does that make sense? So you wanna use this when when you're optimizing your site to get free traffic from Google. So again, you want to pick like one big juicy keyword that really works and optimize your site 
for that keyword. Again, if you don't know what that keyword is, go ahead and go to EmbarkInternetMarketing.com and we'll show you how to figure out what that is. You have to do that advanced market research though. Another, another way to do the opt-ins is with a blog opt-in. There's three ways to do this. One is with a sidebar. You'll see on like the left or right column of your page. A slide up, which you'll see this in some places. It'll, uh, it'll just be on the bottom of the page. A little slide up. Nothing huge, nothing big, nothing annoying. You'll see those pop up sometime also. Um, those actually don't work as well as the slide up. And you can get one of those at instantslideup.com. Those are pretty cool. The best way though is within to do do the opt-in in the blog post. So how do you do this? Well, first of all, you want to be using WordPress for your blogs. It's the easiest, most versatile way to go. Uh, there's very little if if you're not comfortable with the geeky techy stuff at all. Great way to go. It's very intuitive, very simple. Um, so when you're driving traffic to your blog posts, you want to place the opt-in form at the bottom of the post, at the bottom of the blog. Does that make sense? So what happens is posts get tons of traffic, tons of views for like one day, the first day, and they trickle off, right? So what you want to do is remove the opt-in form after the spike. And, and you don't, so at the end of the text, maybe you have text and video at the bottom, you have a small call to action saying, hey, if you like what I'm talking about, Put in your email. Here's where you'll, where you'll learn more. Now, don't make it flashy. Don't put big graphics on it. Keep a very simple button on it. Don't put it in a box and don't emphasize it. Keep it really simple. These, again, these actually outperform the sidebar opt-in or the slide-up opt-in on a blog. Now, I recommend doing this on your blog because you're not just going to have your main squeeze page. You're going to want to get blog traffic because you get a lot of social links, you get a lot of backlinks, which are, gr are great for the search engine optimization. Uh, so you get more free traffic from Google if you do this. And it, it's a great place to host your content instead of having a million different pages. You just uh, can direct people to your blog posts when you want them to see maybe some particular um, subject you're talking about. But again, these outperform the other ways. So I recommend doing this on each new blog post you have. And lastly, we have the traditional squeeze page. So what this is, this is more, more often than not what you think of when you think of an opt-in page. It's just one page where the whole page is dedicated to explaining the features and benefits of the lead magnet. Um, it's all dedicated to providing credibility. Um, you coming from a position of authority, which as a speaker is very important. As an expert is very important. And it's an opportunity for you to provide proof that you are a real person and you do know what you're talking about, which of course you do, right? You don't have any navigation on the page. The only thing to do on it is put in the opt-in, put in their name and email, right? So you have headline, you have some combination of text and video, which we'll talk about what's the best way to do that, and the email form, and that's pretty much it. So there's a multitude of designs for this and just as many schools of theory on what works best. But there's two broad categories of design to consider here. And this is what I want to talk about. One way is you have all just text on the left hand side and then the email form on the right. And the second way is to have a video on the left and then the email form on the right. So you see regardless you're going to have your email form on the right hand side. That works best um, because people's eyes go from left to right. They have an opportunity to see whatever information is on the left first and then the email on the right. Does that make sense? So how do you know which one to do? Well, all text on the left and email form, form on the right appeals to left-brained audiences in technical fields. So if you're talking about like straight up like business uh, methods, like accounting, finance, something very, uh, very technical like that, you're going to want to go with that kind of format. If the videos on the left and the emails from on the right, that appeals most to a right brained audience in softer fields. So if your subject is more along the lines of spirituality, 
or personal development, personal growth. That's the way you want to go more. And a video is, is a much better way for you to convey you, for you to get your personality across the table, for them to see what you actually look like, sound like, talk like, some of your mannerisms, that kind of thing. So people are, are, are more likely to respond better in those fields with this type of format. So what does this actually look like? Let me show you. Okay, here's a basic template of what I'd be talking about. So here you have, of course, this this isn't a live page. This is just a template. Um, you have the the headline here in the red, and the bullet points going down, and then a video here on the right, and then of course this tan box is where the opt in is, the op the the email where they enter their email to then get the thing right. So you'll see here, this is like a, a combination of both of those. One way to do it is to just have the headline and then the video right here where the text is and no text where you just are reading everything that's in the text in the video. And you have the opt-in on the right. The other way is there's no video here on the right and it's just the text and the opt-in. So the format you're looking at right now is actually the best way to kind of meet in the middle with these techniques. And actually, I wouldn't just make a screenshot of the video like it says here. I would make it a live video. And again, you wanna keep this video under two minutes. If you're going over two minutes, you're talking too much, you're gonna bore people. Keep it really short and sweet. Hey, here's who I am, here's what I do. Um, here's what I can teach you in this. Um, enjoy, enter, enter your name and email, click the button, and I'll see you there. So that's it for now. Thanks for learning. And again, visit EmbarkInternetMarketing.com for a free in-depth tutorial on how to do your market research online so you can stand out from the crowd, get free traffic from Google, and turn your raving fans into raving customers. Um, until next time, I'll see you in that video. But until then, this is Jacob Gudger saying thank you for watching, and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.